Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the reassembly guide for the iPhone 4 touchscreen glass digitizer and LCD. The first thing you want to do on reassembling your iPhone 4 is take your two cables on your touchscreen LCD and digitizer and pull them through the midframe. Make sure to pull them all the way through the midframe. A lot of times I have customers tell me uh, that one cable is too short or the cables don't clip in. Well, the problem is a lot of times the digitizer cable or the LCD cable will get pinched in the top of the midframe. So you want to look through it, and if they're not going all the way through, just use a, a flathead screwdriver or a spelger and push them all the way through. You're going to know that you've pushed it all the way through if they're about the same size as shown right there. Um, but if for some reason when you pull them through one shorter than the other significantly, or they're not at the same angle, that means you probably did it wrong. Uh, so go ahead and redo that and make sure they're perfectly fine. Um, if your home button's not properly going all the way through, you want to just push it with your fingers. Don't slam your screen down because you could end up cracking it around the home button. Make sure all the sides are flush um, and that all the corners are in properly and there's no like loose ends or anything like that. So at this point you want to go ahead and screw in uh, the six screws as stated. Um, make sure they're nice and tight and after you screw them go ahead and look at the midframe on the sides of it to make sure that your screen is actually sitting flush with the midframe and that there isn't any holes or gaps or anything like that. Uh, I like to apply pressure to the screen in the midframe just pushing it together while I screw it in to make sure it's in there properly. Once those six screws are tight go ahead and put your four corner screws in make sure that these are all the way in. A couple of them are a little bit tricky so you might have a hard time getting it to go in properly but just play around with it and they will go in. I'm going to fast forward through this spot a little bit to make it go a little bit faster. Okay, once you have all your uh, screws on the side and top screwed in, go ahead and put your vibrator module back into the phone. Um, it goes on the top right side. Make sure when you put this in that it is actually straight down and not bent to the side because sometimes if it's bent to the side, your vibrator will not rotate properly. Um, so I guess I would suggest that as soon as you have both of these screws in, to go ahead and move it a little bit with your screwdriver to make sure that it rotates. Once your vibrator is in, you can go ahead and place your logic board into the midframe. Uh, you want to make sure to put it in from the top and slide it in. Make sure it is actually sitting completely flush onto the midframe um, and that there are no gaps or anything between it and the actual midframe itself. Once your logic board is in place, I suggest going ahead and putting in the screw on the top right hand side. That kind of will hold the board in place without having it moving around. Um, in addition to that, I suggest placing the middle screw of the logic board in place as well. This will completely secure your logic board while you install all the flex cables and the other screws that go into it. Once the logic board is secured, you can go ahead and clip in the three flex cables on the top right of the logic board, as well as your camera and the flex cable on the camera. Once that's in, go ahead and clip in your LCD, as well as touch screen digitizer cable. Make sure that they're both completely flush. Sometimes customers will tell me, hey, my backlight's coming on and the screen's not showing up. Well, most likely one of your cables isn't all the way pushed in, so make sure those are completely pushed in. Um, once those are in, go ahead and take that little metal bracket shield and put that in place. Uh, I generally put the very top middle screw in first. It's the largest screw that goes into the metal shield. That'll kind of hold it secure um, 
the dead center of the shield so it's not moving around too much. Once that's in, you can go ahead and place all the other screws in. Remember, they are all completely different sizes, so you will want to make sure that you are putting the right screws in the correct places. All right, once all those screws are in, you can go ahead and put in your loudspeaker with the Wi-Fi antenna flex cable. Go ahead and place that in its bottom dot connector. The little metal clips on the bottom can sometimes poke up. Go ahead and push them back down so they are sitting flat. And once this loudspeaker is secure, go ahead and put the two screws in. Uh, one on each side. They are two different size screws, so you want to make sure you get the right one in the right place. And of course, don't forget to uh, clip in the flex cable of that loudspeaker so that your reception works. Once those screws are in, go ahead and place your battery back in the correct place. You can go ahead and clip the flex cable of the battery in. Make sure not to rip that cable as it is very sensitive. Um, don't forget to put the little L-shaped connector back under the battery as I actually forgot to do in this video. But um, yeah, you definitely want to put that one back in. A lot of customers will actually email me often and say, hey, this little L-shaped piece, where does it go? Well, that goes under the battery uh, terminal flex cable itself. Once that's there, go ahead and screw that back in. And then you can go ahead and put your dock connector flex back in. Uh, put the little shield on top of it and the two screws. These two screws are again sized differently, so place the correct one in the correct place. Finally, you're going to go ahead and take your back cover, uh, taking it from the top, making sure it's flush on all of the sides, and push it down towards the bottom. Once it's in there, go ahead and screw the screws in. Sometimes uh, you might have a hard time pushing it down all the way. If you do, I suggest kind of leaving it with a little gap and screwing the screws in. The screws will actually pull the back cover up, um, and that will help you properly screw it in. Just a little tip if you ever have a hard time getting your back cover to push all the way down. And once that's complete, your iPhone should go ahead and power up completely just fine. Don't forget to put your SIM card tray and SIM card back into the phone. Um, that is, of course, the final step. And if you guys have any questions or want to buy any parts from us, don't forget to visit us, InjuredGadgets.com.